Did your dad used to hide money in coffee cups? Oh my God, we found we found those old coffee tins hidden in the basement with tons of money. Tons. Oh my God. Hi, Emory. Hi, Matthew. I'm glad that you're here. And first of all, I keep hearing these souls that are here that are trying to that are trying to connect. First of all, your dad passed. Yes. So know that he's stepping forward when I'm here. And when I'm connecting, first of all, I got to tell you, your dad is like your protector on the other side when I'm connecting with him. He shows me that he is so connected to you in spirit. And first of all, when I'm connecting with your father, this was a man who had issues all throughout his body here in this world. But you know what's crazy is that he never really talked about what was going on with him. Your dad shows me when I'm speaking to him that he would get sick and he'd bounce back and he'd get sick and he'd bounce back. And also at the same time, there were things that I feel like you didn't even know about with your dad. That's true. He tells me that nobody even knew that he would, he had cancer uh, until literally right before his passing. It's true. Your dad's telling me he had this for five years. This was not something that was that just came about when he died. He keeps saying to me, five years, five years. Matt, tell her five years I had this. I said to him, well, weren't you in pain? And your father goes, Matt, he goes, you should have saw what I, were, what I did for work. He says, I worked like a dog, he says to me. And he says to me that he would pick shit up. He'd put shit down. He goes, that's what I did. He goes, and do you know, he says that I moved faster. He says to these 20 and 30 year olds on the job site, he said to me, that's what I always used to tell my family. Is that true? That is true. That is so, true. Because here's that your father. I see him like sit. I, and by the way, he loved his elbows on the table because I see him like this at the table and I see him like talking to everybody and being like, oh, you should have saw at work today. He's like, these kids, they don't know how to friggin' do anything. He's like, I'm there moving boxes, moving this, moving that. He's like, and these kids can't lift a single thing. That is true. That is true. So your father says to me, he goes, Matt, he goes, I didn't have time to be sick. He goes, let me tell you something. He goes, if I was sick, the house didn't get fed. That's how I lived my life. He that says, so I worked and I worked and He goes, yeah. He goes, I had pains. He goes, I had pain since I was 16 years old. I was working. He goes to me, he goes, 16, I had pains. He goes, I know. He goes, we didn't say anything. He says, but I didn't expect, he says, to die in this way, he tells me. He didn't. He actually found out, or we found out he had cancer and then he had a stroke. He tells me from the other side, Matt, he goes, my, my family's so upset because I passed so quickly. He goes, I gotta tell them. He says that I died. He goes, and I didn't even have time to feel sick. I didn't have time to feel pain. He goes, I didn't know anything. He says, literally, he says, up to the day that I died, he says, I was still living my life. He says, and that's what I wanted. He goes, because I wasn't letting anybody take care of me. That's what he says to me. He goes, I love my daughter, but I wasn't her responsibility. That's what he said to me. Did your dad used to hide money in coffee cups? Oh my God. We found, we found those old coffee tins hidden in the basement with tons of money. Tons. Oh my God. He's saying to me, oh. he left that for you. He goes, Matt, the one thing I was worried about was I thought they were going to throw this out. And he showed me all these coffee things with money in it. Yes. Yes. And the cigar boxes, like the autocrat, you know, the old autocrat cans stuffed with money. That's crazy. Cause he's going to be Matt. Make sure he goes, I hope they didn't throw them out. I hope they didn't throw them out when he's bringing this through. And your no. father goes to me, he goes, Matt, he goes, I work too hard for my money. He goes, I didn't trust the banks. He said to me, and I see these, I, I see the money, right? So I, I almost feel like a drug dealer. I see this money all rolled up and stuck in. That's true. That is true. Your father goes to me, Matt. He goes, nobody knew. And I see him going and hiding this stuff all around. He's laughing about that on the other side. That is true. And actually it paid for his funeral. You're kidding me. No. He said to me, he goes, I, I didn't know why he was telling me that. I, he goes, Matt, that was their inheritance. He goes, I never told anybody about it, but it was. He goes, I, he goes, I had this for them. That was this. That was like the savings he's telling me. Yeah, he had a lot more, but that actually paid for his funeral. That's crazy. Yeah. I gotta tell you, your father says to me when I'm connecting with him, that the one thing that he wants you to know is how much that he loved you. He goes, Matt, I didn't always say that. He goes, I was a type of person, I was a doer, not a sayer. So literally, he says, all my money went to my kids. He says, I would go and surprise them, especially back when they were younger, Matt. I used to bring them on trips. And he says to me, Matt, he says, all I cared about was giving my daughter and my family a good life. And the one thing that he wants to let you know is that you showed your love to him every day because you still stress out and you still get nervous and you say, oh my God, you know, did my dad know how much I loved him? Did you know how much I cared about him? And he's saying to me, yes. He says, I, I did. I bought his house. Um, I, I have his house. Maybe you should invite me over in case there's more money there. <laughs> But I'm just kidding with you. He says to me this, he says, Matt, he goes, I want my daughter to know one thing. You know, you go back and you say, oh my God, if I knew dad was passing, I would have spent more time with him. We would have done more with one another. He says, listen, I don't want you to hold that hold that burden or hold that that 
thought or that guilt says, I want you to know that it's not about all of that. He says, it's about the love that we shared here in this world. He wants you to know that he's back with your mother on the other side. I bet you he is. But he tells me that your mother used to, like couldn't stand him here in this world. She she used to get so annoyed because all he did was work. He goes to me, Matt, he goes, I got to tell you something. He goes, I, we didn't have a retirement, but we're retired now. And he goes to me, he goes, I'm with the... He goes, I loved it. He goes, and she loved me. He goes, even though she thought I was an asshole at times, he goes, I want her to know that we're still, that we're here and we're together. Yeah, because she had died in 2001. So he was, you know, they never retired together, really. That's so crazy. That, she did think he was an asshole sometimes. <laughs> well, listen, I, I didn't say it. Your loved ones do. I love her. Oh, he was right. He was right. He says to me, he goes, Matt, he goes, I want them to, want her to know that my whole life, he says, there was only love, one love for me, and that was your mom. He says, so please know that we are together on the other side. Please know that we are at peace and that, you know, I am watching over her always. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you so much. I wanted to hear from my dad so so badly. I've heard from my mom from you, but this was this was a gift. Thank you so much.